Okay, uh, now we have Lara Garman, uh, who's going to uh, talk about sustainable sediment management of reservoirs. Uh, Lara has a bachelor's and master's in civil engineering and more specifically hydraulic engineering from RWTH Aachen University in Germany. Sorry if I butchered any of that. But, uh, Lara is a, a project leader at Houston Sediment where she's responsible for consulting, planning, and implementation of uh, sustainable sediment management, and she's also a member of the Technical Working Group for desludging and cleaning of lakes, basins, and reservoirs. Thank you very much. I'm going to talk about sustainable reservoir management, or I can tell you how to become a guardian of a reservoir. Let me quickly introduce not myself, but my boss, who's in the program as a speaker, who supports me and uh, gives me the chance today to do the presentation here, to be the speaker. And together, yeah, we are doing Hilskens sediments right now. Together, we are here in the States. And we are part of Hilskens, which is a, a holding organization with more than 17 different companies, including us, Hülsken Sediments, and also Hülsken uh, Wasserbau, which means hydraulic engineering, and um, world dredgers. And together, we share the knowledge to do the sediment management, to plan it, to design it, and also to build the dredgers, the vessels we are using. But now I want to start of how to become a guardian of a reservoir. So first thing is you need to participate in a challenge. Two years ago, oh no, now it's three years ago, the Bureau of Reclamation together with the US Army Corps of Engineers, they proclaimed the Guardians of the Reservoir Challenge, which was a competition of finding a sustainable solution for sediment management in reservoirs. In total, we were over 75 competitors and we made it through three different phases. So there was first handing in an idea, then a concept. And at the later stage, phase number three, there were just three parties left and we had to do a presentation. Due to COVID, it was um, a movie we had to do of the field presentation or the lab presentation and at the end, we made it, we won the challenge, and now we can call ourselves guardian of the reservoir. But what am I talking about? I'm talking about the problem of the siltation, sedimentation of reservoirs, or how to de-sediment those. The idea we have, or the field we're dealing with, is the sedimentation in the upstream field and the erosion in the downstream river. So we all know reservoirs are sediment traps. The water is bringing the sediments in sight, the water is leaving, but the sediment stays. If we wait long enough, there won't be a lake, there won't be a reservoir. We can just walk through the water like Jesus. But looking down in the water, in the downstream water, the missing sediment is causing a sediment deficit, causing erosions and many problems coming with that instability of structures, land erosion, bad erosion, and many things more. Nowadays, we have several reservoirs, but there is a limit capacity. And uh, Joe just talked about it earlier. We have an, Im an immense problem with the sediment or siltation rate per year, and in total, we are heading towards a loss of capacity. So it's important, it is important to restore the capacity we have because with just building new reservoirs, new dams, we cannot keep on track with the whole capacity we need worldwide. The World Bank said once the last century was used to build reservoirs. This one will be used to solve the sediment problems. Here I, I brought just an example of Lake Mead, the Hoover Dam close by, and also Lake Powell 
which are both facing immense problems with hesitation, which needs to be solved. I already, I already talked about the problems sediment deficits are causing in the downstream water. And the problem of the bed and bank erosion is, is a cave. You have a free field, a free running river. But what happens in urbanization? What happens in cities? We need to protect our cities. So we do hydraulic engineering stuff to protect those. But it's all a problem of the sediment deficit we caused earlier. Then also the instability of structures, bridges, structures close to the water, foundations, which got erosion problems and then get instable. But if we are looking down at the, at the delta of a river, if you know Missi uh, the Mississippi, the Louisiana, I think it's Louisiana Delta, uh, in the last 100 years, you can see from satellite pictures that the land was just lost. We have now plenty of water and less land than before over there. And this is not just only a problem in the uh, Louisiana Delta, but in many more. The conventional methods used to solve sedimentation problems is ignorance. That's the best, because you don't see the sediments there below the surface of the water, so I can't see any problems there. Works sometime, mostly not. Then the dredging and dumping, the landfill method, which is high in logistics, cost, um, costly, expensive, and we need to face it. We don't have enough space to do the landfill for all the sediments. We have global, uh, internationally in the reservoirs kept over there. And then there's the flushing, which, which means we just open the gates, we just spill the water, taking the sediments up there, downstream toward the river. But all those three options are not really sustainable. So looking back to the guardian of the reservoir thing, phase one, the idea. So what was our idea? What is our idea? We want to develop a near natural solution, to be the technical bridge between the upstream water, the downstream water, to transfer the sediment. Uh, so we invented fully automatic vessels which are loosening the sediments at the ground, pumping them towards the downstream water. We can just put them in front of a turbine, bring them directly in the turbine inlet, or transporting them via a bypass system directly to the downstream water. Why do we do it? Because it's positive for the river morphology. It's good against the erosion. So it's positive for the stability of the river downstream. It also is good for the structural safety, the formation of river delta, and one of the best things, we preserve the water. It still is inside the circle, we don't extract it. Phase two, the concept. You can see here a section on the, it's the left side. On the left side, you can see our vessel, our hydro suction dredge, which is connected via a cloud with the operator, with the program system, and um, all the stakeholders and then can transport around the clock 24-7, weekends, vacations, Christmas, doesn't matter, sediment. This means we are low in operating costs because we don't need any people around. We are really efficient with that because we can work around the clock. And everything is measured. That means we have devices on our vessels which measure the volume flow, the mass capacity, so we know at every time how much sediment we already transported, we are transporting right now, so we can survey the whole process. Also, we take those data to put it back into the program, so 
the vessel, the setting mover, can decide if he pumps more or less. What makes it also sustainable is that we are also looking at the discharge of the downstream water. Because we are transporting sediments downstream and we don't want them to settle down directly um, under the dam. So we, taking into account the discharge and the situation of the downstream river, which is also same time regulating the transport process we are doing. And that means that we are all, um, that we all, 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 missing out a word, sorry. Um, that means that we are looking onto the sediment concentration. So everything is regulated that the downstream river can always transport the sediment away, which we are giving into the downstream water. So for the competition, we had two different models. We had the sediment mover on the left, which is a smart engine, smart vessel, and we had the little brother, the mini mover. Um, I call him the little brother because he is not as smart as the sediment mover. It's also measuring some data, but not that evolved um, than the SETI mover. And it's, the construction is a bit different. So one thing has a pump down at the water and it's um, just moving forward and tearing the pump while the other one is always going up and down. So it looks a bit like a cheese, like a Swiss cheese. But what we focused on is that we have a modular design. We want to transport it on the street. And as we are based in Germany, in Europe, our streets are narrow. So our design is made that we can put it into a 20 foot container, bring it onto a, um, a transporter and just send it through the States. But we can also scale it up because the system is working on a small vessel and also on a big vessel. And if one vessel is not enough, we can have several of those. So we can scale up the whole system. Okay, what happens when the reservoir shape is not really yeah, the best for one vessel or for one position? We can just move it. So we put it on shore. We can connect it to anything, trees, earth anchors, or a bolt, because there are not really high forces as the vessel is always swimming. It's floating. So we can just shift it from side to side. This also enables um, other uses in the reservoir. For example, uh, shipping or leisures, so we don't block the entire reservoir as we can move from section to section. As I said earlier, everything is connected to a cloud. Because I think um, in this century, data management, data logging and analyzing is really important. So we collect our data in real time. We show it to everyone who wants to see it, the operator, um, the owner, maybe authorities who have a dashboard to can always look what's going on right now, download the data, historical data, real-time data, whatever. So um, our vision is to have everything online all the time. Yeah, I think I can just skip it. I talked about it earlier, all the things we have included over there. I just animated it. I, I click it through. What we see here was the, um, the challenge, the guardians of the reservoir challenge in the three phases I presented earlier. So phase one started in 2020 and it was handing in the idea. Then we had the concept, we did some pilots actually. And then in phase three, we did the demonstration. And while doing it, we also been participating in some committees. For example, we worked uh, on a German guideline and also on the ICOL bulletin, which was, I, uh, it's not yet published, but it's um, in preprint, I think. 
and uh, we got a patent on our process and we also focused on um, new technologies, for example, the uh, greenhouse gas harvesting from reservoir, uh, sediment reservoir, name, from sediments which are in reservoir. Um, so we have some um, projects, we have some projects um, together with some universities in Germany uh, where, are, where we are developing like new technologies to tackle also that. So finally, phase three, the demonstration. We can see here um, some learned lessons from our first pilot. This one was Ponte Cosi in Italy. Um, it, was, it was actually my first project uh, with a set mover. And uh, there we figured out it can survive floods, it can survive droughts, and it can deal with several different situations we were facing over there. In that project, we had a really dense sediment, so we used a cutter hat to loosen it, then also hydro um, injections to loosen it even more, and then we pumped it through. And uh, due to a long transfer distance of uh, one kilometer, we also had to install a second pump, uh, which boosted it up. So we had a booster pump over there. And then because the energy grid there was not that stable, we had also problems with the uh, um, energy um, on site. But at the end, it was a really good project and it worked out very well. So we did the second one, also in Italy. Um, it was Ponte Corvo, it's close to Rome. And uh, there, we, the structure was quite interesting because it was a concrete basin they built up and put it just in the land, uh, which was 15 meters high. Uh, so we had yeah, a really good design phase how to bring our equipment over there. And then the, fine, uh, the sediment was really fine. We had steep banks and we had to pay attention on the structure itself because it was yeah, delicate, I would say, and old too. And uh, there we also faced a dry fall, so they emptied the whole reservoir. And uh, it was quite interesting to see the sediments on the ground and also to see the pro uh, progress we made with the sediment mover over there. And now this was the real demonstration because we just had like a time window uh, to do it and both pilot projects were already closed. So we had to fake a project, you can say it like that. We went to a site close to our company and uh, within one day we just built up the entire system. We made it work, we, um, we got it on camera, which was the most important part that uh, moment. And um, we uploaded it to uh, YouTube. So if you Google Guardians of the Reservoir Challenge 2022, then you might find our video. So what are our next steps? The further development we want to do? As we won the Guardians of the Reservoir Challenge, we want to do pilot projects here in the US because the problem is the same in the US than in Germany, in Europe, Asia, worldwide. For that, we are right now looking for a partner to do so or to open a US bases on our own here. Then, I, um, I said it before, we want to continue with the development of a technology to harvest methane gas uh, out of the reservoirs and maybe to use it as an energy um, source. We are also working on uh, green energy supply for our system because right now we, um, we are based on land energy. If you have a hydropower plant, it's not a problem, but there might be a different reservoir where it can be a challenge to get energy. So we are also working on a green energy supply like solar power or maybe one day the methane gas itself. Then, of course, we cannot always 
transfer the sediments from the upstream water to the downstream water. So we are also facing the challenge of inline sediment cleaning, processing of the sediment before transferring it. And uh, yeah, so far we had good laboratory tests, good results, and um, of course we tried to upscale it. So thank you for your attention and I'm open to questions. I'm not quite sure if I understood your question. Yes. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Um, I would say if you have a vessel, a device which is moving and collecting the sediments on a large scale or large, um, large field, you're more um, spontaneous is the wrong word, <laughs> but, but I'm missing out the correct word because you can just move. The problem is every reservoir is an individual case. So the geometry is individual and also the distribution of the sediments is always an individual case. So I think if you have a moving um, device, a moving dredge, you have the better option, you're more efficient. Please. Yeah, I have a question. I'm, I'm not sure uh, if what you presented, is it much different from the water injection dredging that the one that presented from the fact of removing the material from the reservoir or the stream? And uh, I mean, the concept of the scale, the different concepts, uh, the question I've asked to you also. Uh, when you, you ship the material down to somewhere, whatever it needs to be, how do you know how much? I think the main difference between those two um, processes is that we transport the sediments directly towards the downstream water or directly into the, the turbine inlet, so the erosive... Um, yes, so let's say when we do the transport, the sediment is, is gone, it's downstream. Regarding the hydro injection, you just move the sediment inside the reservoir and you try to bring it close enough to the outlet that it, um, it transports itself downstream. Was it okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Um, yes, we, in uh, one of the pilot projects, we had um, a big problem with debris. And there we figured out that with the initial concept or the initial set mover, uh, we could process small particles, small de debris. But if we are talking about trees and um, branches, then we need to remove them in front. Um, we are constantly monitoring the downstream water, also on the quality of the water, and um, as the sediment concentration we transport or we dilute downstream um, is very low. We never experienced any problem. Thank you.